Welcome. In this video, I show you how to deploy a RongoDB on Kubernetes in five minutes. In particular, you will learn, we will learn how to deploy an RongoDB cluster on Kubernetes. Previously, I've set up a Kubernetes cluster on Google Compute just by clicking and waiting for a few minutes. After that, I've sorted out access control such that I can now just get nodes, cube control get nodes, and I see I have a cl cluster running Kubernetes version 1.11 with four nodes. The first thing I have to do is to deploy the OrangoDB Kubernetes operator. Before we do that, let me just explain a few words about what an operator is. What you want is to simply be able to say, I want an OrangoDB deployment and get on with it. And this is exactly where the operator comes in. To enable that, you, the operator defines certain custom resource types, namely Orango deployments, and watches deployment of those, and then can behind the scenes start ports and sort out persistent volumes and persistent volumes claims and the rest of the fancy technology. So therefore, we have to deploy the, core, the, the operator, and for this I have put the two necessary commands into a little script. The first is to deploy the dis definitions of the custom resources, and the second is to deploy the actual operator. Let's run this, and let's quickly see what happens by just watching which ports arrive. In this case, it will deploy two pods in the default namespace. That's two copies of the operator, and they do leader election uh, with the etcd of Kubernetes, and one of them will be active and the other will be on standby in case the first one fails. Now the operator is deployed, and therefore I can simply take a YAML file like this, which describes a resource of kind Rango deployment. It has a name, my RangoDB cluster. And in the spec, I say I want the cluster, I give the Docker image name, and I also ask it for the setup of a load balancer for external access. So let's see what, what happens if I deploy this. The operator notices that this custom resource has been deployed. And will act on it. The first thing it will do, it has to find out what version of the database that is, and therefore it starts a test balloon, this ID container here, which essentially just uh, is asked what uh, Docker image is this, what SHA-256, and what version of the database it is. With that, it can deploy the different parts of the database. Uh, the first you see is three so-called agents. That's our internal raft store holding the uh, cluster configuration which you should normally not uh, notice at all. Then there's the actual database servers or primaries. That's uh, three pods with persistent volumes which do the actual data storing. And then there is three coordinators which take the client requests, uh, run the user interface and uh, distribute queries across the cluster because uh, it, the query planning is done in the coordinators and the results accumulated. Now oh, that's all there, less than a minute. And in addition, I can ask for the service which has been created. And indeed, there is an external access load balancer. It has a public IP, which is this here. And therefore, I can now just point my browser to this IP address on a RangoDB standard port. And notice that by default everything is TLS encrypted, by default with self-signed certificates, and has authentication switched on. Therefore, when I point my browser at that, it is not particularly happy with it. It uh, says this connection is not secure. So therefore, I have to accept an exception here and probably do this multiple times because the load balancer distributes the load across the three coordinators. 
In another video, I will show you how to circumvent this using other certificates. Here we go. I can log in as root. In the beginning, the password is empty, but I could change this right away. Right, and here's my cluster. It has three coordinators, it has three database servers, and if I quickly create a collection called C with three shards and replication factor two, and then maybe run a query to stick some data in there. So that inserts 100,000 documents. And once this is done, I can look at the collection and see the documents. And if I look at this display here, I can see that indeed three shards have been created. The three shards have been distributed across the cluster, across the three database servers. Each is the leader for one of the shards. And since I have set up replication factor two, I have one follower on each shard. And that was rather quick. And so therefore, we are already done. I've shown you how to deploy an ArangoDB cluster on Kubernetes with our operator. And I close with these links. And by saying that you can have links to all the resources and the YAML file in the description of this video. Goodbye.